road trip has become a film genre in its own right, creating plenty of scope for characters to discover things about life, the universe and themselves while entertaining the audience. South Africa offers endless opportunities for us to make our own little odysseys off the beaten track, but there's one ingredient that should never be overlooked. I'm talking about food for the road. And Utica's here with delicious ideas for meals to go. The mere mention of a road trip was enough to create much excitement in our household. I have an older brother and four cousins and we always road trip together. We were an absolute handful. My grandparents would load us into a VW vehicle. I have no idea how we got all of these kids into that car and off we went. It was never the destination, it was always the journey and what we kids called road food or podcasts. I'm recreating some of my grand's favorite dishes and her specialties. We have her delicious mealy cake. It's buttery and made with grated white mealies, roasted chicken and mushroom pie, and then a Bombay chicken served with potato salad. It's perfect dishes for a road trip. I'm starting out with the mealy cake, soft butter going into the mixing bowl. Let's get this attachment on. Cream the butter until it's light and fluffy. Gradually add the sugar to the bowl. The sugar and butter are now well combined. Let's add an egg at a time, just one egg. And to that, a teaspoon of flour. Repeat this process until all the eggs are added and don't forget to add the flour. And that's the last one. Remove the attachment. The butter, sugar and eggs are smooth and creamy and it does look like vanilla ice cream. For the next step, add the grated mealies. Lift up the bowl and lightly work that through. Don't be too concerned if the mixture looks like it's split. It's going to come together quite nicely. Next, the remaining flour going in. To that, baking powder and salt. Seven ingredients come together to create this glorious cake. Mix that well together. Make sure you're scraping the bottom of the bowl to ensure all the ingredients are mixed. That's the mealy cake batter done. You'll need a 25 centimeter tin for this. Pour in the batter. And don't be tempted to add more flour. It might look a bit runny at the moment, but it's going to set beautifully in the oven. This goes into a preheated oven at 170 degrees Celsius. While that's in the oven, let's get started with the roasted chicken and mushroom pies. I've cheated a bit and roasted the chicken already, so let's heat up the pan. Sunflower oil going in. Keep it quite simple, no spices going in as yet. The oil's hot, in goes the mushrooms, and be careful not to throw them in. You don't want the oil to splash back at you. Use a wooden spoon, stir that around. The mushrooms are starting to turn warm golden in colour and now we can add just a touch of thyme. These mushrooms look perfect, pushing them over to the side of the pan like this, using the same bowl from earlier and gently coax them out. To this pan add a bay leaf, to that some onion, to the onion add salt, fresh thyme going into this as well. Stir that in, to this add grated carrots, stir that through and then the leeks. Even though this filling was wrapped in puff pastry, this was a perfect opportunity for my grand to sneak a few vegetables in. The carrots, onions and leeks have softened, let's add the ginger and garlic paste, mix that through. You can use just garlic for this, play around with the recipe and make it your own. Add the chicken. I've removed the skin and the bone. Sauteed mushrooms going in. To this, add the white sauce. And I've made a simple white sauce using butter, flour, and full cream milk, seasoned with a bit of salt and some pepper. This should look a lot like a chicken and mayo filling. Let's season with black pepper. And now you can use a rub just to add a little more flavor. Oh, that aroma is fabulous. While that's cooling down, I'm going to get the pre-lined pie cases. I'm using some store-bought puff pastry for this recipe. I've let them cool in the refrigerator as well. Puff pastry doesn't enjoy the heat in the kitchen. And I've also made a few little toppings with hearts and stars as well. The filling's cooled down. For this, 
I'm adding coriander. I love it, even with soup stews and curries, even salads. You could probably get about eight pies here. I'm just doing four today. To fill up the pies, a few scoops of the filling going in. Always make sure you press down. If I was serving these at home, I'd add a touch of cream just to sauce them up a bit. Now, moisten this with a touch of water and lightly rub that. I'm using another piece of pastry over the top and just line that up I'm using a cake fork now and just press that down. Make sure you press down quite firmly. You don't want the lid of the pie to pop off. And there we have it, that's our first one done. To finish the pies, we need some beaten egg and a pastry brush and just brush that with a bit of egg. This is gonna give you a lovely golden crust. And now to decorate, let's see, shall we do some with hearts and some with stars? Even a combination of hearts and stars. I think a heart and two stars, perhaps. Once again, brush with the egg. And that's the first one done. I always thought of my gran as a bit of a magician in the kitchen. She never wasted anything and she could take a tiny bit of curry or leftovers and turn it into a treat for us kids. So this is what she made when she roasted chicken, but we also feasted on mutton curry pies and chicken curry pies. It's the last one. That's perfect timing. The mealy cake has been in the oven for about an hour, and I'm sure it's ready. I can actually get the aroma off the mealy cake. Golden perfection. Let's get the pies in. While that's in the oven, I'm going to start with the Bombay chicken and for that we're going to heat some sunflower oil going into a hot pan and to that add finely chopped onions, a level teaspoon of salt going in, some curry leaves, two green chilies. I'm not going to slice them in half, I'm just going to snap them. Don't want too much chili burn in this and lightly mix that around. To this I'm adding some ginger and then some garlic. There's a fair bit of garlic going in. Next ingredient, red chilli powder. Quick stir, just for a few seconds. And next, in goes the chicken thighs. Chicken thigh fillets work best for this recipe. They don't dry out as well and they have the best flavour. To the chicken, add a touch of cumin, a teaspoon of coriander, a touch of garam masala and some turmeric. Mix those spices in and use the wooden spoon and scrape the pan. You can see the marinade on the bottom of the pan is quite sticky. For a bit of zing now, I've got some lemon cheeks. Squeeze that over. Lastly, season with some black pepper. The chicken's ready. Let's start packing our food for our road trip. I love these tiffins. They add a bit of happiness to any occasion. And it certainly cheers up our lovely road food, or padkos. So in the bottom layer, I'm going to pop in some baby rocket. I've boiled some potatoes here and tossed them in a homemade mayonnaise, pop that on top of the rocket. To this, I've got some purple spring onion going on top, a touch of coriander. And that's our first layer for the next one. I've got the Bombay chicken here and that's going to go into the second tier of our tiffin. A touch of coriander going on top of that. This is starting to feel like a tower of treats. And for the top layer, a good doorstop size of this mealy cake going in. And what's lovely about it is that it doesn't need cream or butter, there's enough in there already. Clip it in place. I'm sure it's time to take out the pies. Let's take a look. These have browned perfectly, and if you just tap on it lightly, it should make a lovely noise. Let them cool down completely before you pack them. If you pack a hot pie, it's going to turn soggy. My grandparents shared their love of life and adventure with me. With that came many memorable road trips. I hope my tips and recipes today inspire you to plan that family road trip.